Okay, I'll do that on the A string. Going a whole step, the thumb slides a lot. Maybe even three inches. And if you're going a half step, it slides about an inch. Okay, I highly recommend that because if you don't do that, you're never going to play in tune. <laughs> Seriously, uh, you know, whenever my students are out of tune, it's always two reasons. Either they're not, their thumb is locked, or they're not listening. So if their thumb is able to move, um, all they have to do is listen, you know, hear the pitch in their head, and then their finger will go to it. Um, okay, so let's talk about slurring. Slurring is also something you should just practice on one string. When you cross a string, you're act that's actually called string crossing. So when you go from one string to another, it's called string crossing, but obviously you can do it with a slur too. And the reason it's hard um, for a beginner is because you have to be able to use a lot of different muscles. Um, so beginners usually use the big muscles, and that's good. Um, uh, so it's better not to do string crossing with slurs until you can, you feel com really comfortable with on one string. So I guess with one string, you could try just by going like this, just playing one note and then slur the next two. That sometimes helps that kind of a pattern. And then you can switch to just regular, like slurring two notes. Okay, while I was doing that, I was using the sliding thumb technique. Um, so, I think if you really want to cross strings with slurs, what you have to do is some finger flexing uh, exercises with your bow. Um, I think you probably watched that video where I teach how to, how to make the bow hold, doing these five steps, and then pronate. Pronate is really important. It's, pronating is important at the frog, and definitely at the tip, you, 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 get, you get quite pronated when you're playing at the tip. Um, now, don't worry about that now, but what you have to try to do is get a, a you get a bow hold that's good, and if you hold your bow vertically, it's really easy not to squeeze. When you, when you do that, all of a sudden you can feel tension um, in there, especially in the, in the pinky. So I always do vertical bow exercises. If I hold the bow horizontally, it's always with two hands. Now, um, having said that. <laughs> There's one exercise you can do this way. Uh, so, let's see. Finger flexing would be, you get the good bow hold, which is like this. And the thumb, the thumb touches, do you see this little thing I have on there? I don't know if you see that little rubbery green thing, but I'm going to take it off for a second. Because your thumb should touch that bump of the black frog. I call that the frog's nose. <laughs> And there's a little, there's a bit of the brown wood be, just in, in between that black grip. So your thumb is going to touch a bit of the brown wood and a bit of the frog's nose. And the, the place your thumb touches is right, right there. The, that very side of the tip of your thumb there. And that's the, that is the pivot point where your thumb can do anything and you anything you want your thumb to be able to change or change to any kind of a shape when you're playing. All right, so your thumb can be very bent to very straight or even this way while you're playing, but you have to be able to to get it back whenever you need it into any position. So these rubbery things really help make it a lot more comfortable. 
and especially if you're playing a lot, it just um, makes it less effort, I think, even. So finger flexing means when you're going to do this. And I'll do it from this direction. It's good to hold your, your wrist, your right wrist with your left hand like that, because then you're isolating just the finger muscles. Your arm is not moving. I'll show you this way. So keep, keep the, the hairs parallel with like a wall over here, say, and you're moving like this. And hold your wrist so that you know for sure your fingers are doing that. Now your thumb is going to slip constantly. Just as soon as it slips, you just remake your bow hold and do it again. It'll probably slip after only a second or two. And just try to do that. Show you again from here. And this is what your fingers do when you, when you cross a string. You have to, I mean, your arm is also doing something, uh, moving. But if you don't include the fingers, you won't be able to get the correct bow path. And by bow path, I mean a perpendicular path to the string. 